Hello. Welcome, my little degenerates. Yes, I know. Uh, for those that's watching this on YouTube, yes. This is my face. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, your boy's looking scruffy. Your boy is looking mighty rough. But honestly, I don't really care for looks at this moment. Um, I just wanted to talk. This is probably not going to be edited well. This is probably going to be the roughest video. I'm doing this all on my cell phone, so please forgive me if the audio is not great. Um, but yeah, I just have to get some things off my chest because um, I'm soon about to go on vacation to Amsterdam. I'm excited for that. I might do a vlog on that. Maybe, 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 maybe. But um, I just wanted to talk about something that happened recently about the passing of Toriyama and at first I wasn't able to do this video um, because I just personally you know didn't have the will to talk about this and also, every time I would do this intro, which is, this is like the 20th fucking intro I've done, I would just tear the fuck up. But, I'm better now. And this time I got a fucking tissue, alright? I got the fucking tissue, alright? So your boy's ready for that waterworks. But, there's neither here nor there. Toriyama. For those that don't know who Toriyama is, Toriyama is a manga artist, writer, who made a very influential, very cool fucking manga uh, of all time. The manga of all time. Um, you may have heard of it. You hell, you probably watched it. If you're a girl, you probably had your 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 fucking boyfriend or your fucking uh, brother or maybe your sister fucking screaming to the top of their lungs trying to get to Super Saiyan. Um, that's right, Dragon Ball. Um, uh, and this man basically was not a goat. All right. He was not no GOAT. Everyone keeps saying he's the GOAT. No, no, no. Toriyama was no GOAT. Let's get that straight. There's GOATs, and then there's All Fathers. All right? And Toriyama was a fucking All Father. This man, just like Stan Lee, who is another All Father, paved the way for geek culture to make it mainstream. In his own way. For anime. Because back in the day. Anime. Was not as what it was. Like how it is now. You see how like fucking. Megan Mastalia can dress up as anime. Characters. You got fucking. Uh, Michael B. Jordan out here. Talking about I'm a huge anime fan. And shit. And literally made Creed 3. And it, Creed 3 is literally just a fucking anime. Um. Back in the day, that was not like that. That anime was very, very, very niche audience shit. Now, anime, literally every month, there's like an anime movie that comes out on theaters and you can go watch it. <laughs> it's like, what? When I was growing up, that was not the case at all. <laughs> and... It's funny how far anime has come. And it's all because of Dragon Ball. And the cultural phenomenon that was Dragon Ball. Like, motherfuckers, you had to be there when Dragon Ball was coming out. You just had to be there. This shit was influential, bro. You had... It was so influential. This shit had hood niggas. Hood niggas, like... Literally, Bloods, Crip, I'm talking about killers. Didn't give a fuck about any fucking, any fucking shit. 
They didn't care about no other shit, bro. They didn't care about no other anime. But they were all in agreement. Dragon Ball was the shit. Dragon Ball was the shit. Dragon Ball was the shit. And it was like, what the fuck? You used to get bullied in school for liking anime. But if there's one thing you can't say, it's Dragon Ball. That's one thing. Anybody, even the people who bullied you, they would be like, well, that's Dragon Ball. That's Dragon Ball Z. I can't be, I can't, whoa. You, you, they put that shit on a, on a fucking pillar, all right? And this shit was a cultural phenomenon. So Toriyama meant a lot. He meant so much that you literally have other animes that was influenced by this shit. You literally have Kishimoto, the creator of Naruto, come out and say recently that, you know, you know how saddened that Toriyama is gone. And that if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have gotten Naruto. Another popular anime. Everyone knows what Naruto is, but... You had the One Piece creator literally coming out and saying the same thing. Two goats. These were the big threes. You were either Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, or or One Piece fan. And for them two to come out just tells you. Hell, you can just look at how shonen manga slash anime is. All based off of what Toriyama said. So much how storytelling, the rival characters, um, battle mangas, and how they're done, the escalation of fights, all because of this one dude named Toriyama. And it it was it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It was a phenomenon. You don't need me to talk anymore about how big or how impactful Dragon Ball was. Motherfucker, you can literally go on the internet right now and type in Toriyama Chinese government. And you literally have the Chinese government talking about how influential Dragon Ball was. And how saddened they are to lose Toriyama. The Chinese fucking government, bro. Like, that's insane. That's transcendent. That If that's not transcendent, where your work just takes a life of its own, that is, that is beautiful. That is, that's what every creator wish they can do. But Toriyama just spoke to everybody. Dragon Ball spoke to everybody. Whether you were black, Asian, white, Hispanic, everybody. Dragon Ball just spoke to you. And now, this is the part of the video where I get into why Dragon Ball was so special to me. So, Dragon Ball was special to me. Because when I was growing up, and this is this is a prime example of how powerful art can be. This is how powerful fucking art and power of the pen can be. So when I was growing up, I was a very sickly person. Like, because I was a chronic asthmatic. Like, basically, like, I believe my left or my right lung was weak and I had asthma and my asthma was really bad. Like I would literally collapse instantly. My asthma was really bad. I was in the hospital, the ER, the kids ER, literally my whole entire kid life. And basically I was just hooked up to machines. So, you know, like in, in fucking, um, Naruto, you had Nagato, uh, and Nagato, when you first see him, when you when you see him, when Naruto finally sees him, that man was hooked up to the machines and shit. It was like like really like 
malnourished and shit, that was literally me. And I remember, like, every day, they would literally, doctors would come in and be like, I don't know if this kid's going to make it to my mom. Because genuinely, I was literally too weak. Like, I was being pumped with asthma medication left and right. Like, steroid left and right. Like, I was out of it half of the time. I don't know what the fuck was going on when I was a kid. And I remember hearing that, that, yo, you're you're not going to make it. And just was like losing hope. Like, genuinely losing hope. And I was just like, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not going to make it. It is what it is. But then, you know, when you, you know, there was literally this show on TV when you go to the, uh, in my room, and the nurse would always come in, and she would, like, flip the channel and whatnot, and she would just, one day, she'd just turn on the show, and I see this kid with a fucking monkey tail, with a spiky hair, and with a fucking pole in his hand. And this kid was just happy as fuck. He's around my age. He's happy as fuck. He's flipping around. And he's just doing all these cool martial arts moves. And he's fucking like, just fucking up adults. And he's just cheerful and he's happy and he's just so optimistic about everything. You hear this kid talk and he's just talking so optimistic and so hopeful. And... It was seeing this kid named Goku constantly and constantly just fight these strong ass opponents, go to martial arts tournament, gets his ass beat, but still keeps going. That that touched me as a kid. And that shit pushed me to be like, no. I'm just going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep going as best as I can. And I'm going to, if I fucking, fucking pass out and go, that's fine. But i got to try. And I just kept going. I kept trying to take meds, everything. Until eventually, I was at the point where I was finally able to, like, be consistent and not have asthma attacks and not faint and whatever. And literally, it was because of Goku and his unrelenting will to keep going despite everything, despite no whatever challenge he had to keep going. That will. That, I guess the word, the best way to describe it would be perseverance. I think it's the strongest theme Dragon Ball has ever have. You constantly see all the characters, in, in particular Goku, go through all these tough challenges throughout the whole entire show. And he just gets back up no matter what. And it was incredible seeing that shit when I was a kid. And then I get out of the hospital. And mind you, this is, this is Dragon Ball. So I didn't realize when I got out, by the time I got out of the hospital, they was already starting to do Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> so I was in high school. I was in school and fucking uh, Dragon Ball was coming out. And it was like, bro, I'm like, Goku's all grown up as an adult. And he's still the same way. He's still this hopeful and cheerful dude. He's stronger. He's faster. Uh, even though he dies in the first arc of Dragon Ball, the first the Saiyan arc, the first, by fighting his brother, then you find out he's a fucking alien. But I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense because he's got a fucking tail. And it was just 
magical, magical, just seeing this this character grow up, have a kid now, has a wife, but it's still the same way, and he's still strong and still mobile as ever. And that was inspiring. That was inspiring. And it kept me going for the longest time. So. The point I'm trying to make with all this. Is that. Toriyama decided one day. To get up. And. Decided to write a fucking book. About that little kid. And that one little book told another kid to persevere. And I just sit there and I think that how he's gone. That that he did something so special. He told a black young kid to keep going persevere reach your limit push past your limit go super saiyan and he and he did that he just woke up and thought of that idea and if it wasn't for him and what he did I would have never have been alive I wouldn't have fallen in love with anime and got to watch some incredible anime um, and then meet some of my closest friends. <laughs> um, some of my closest friends. Uh, and some of them uh, from high school. <laughs> they know who they are. They're watching this video. Then you have... <laughs> My fucking, uh, especially would have never met half of the niggas in the anime club. And I love those motherfuckers. I would do anything for those motherfuckers. Because I never had some shit like that. I never thought I would be able to have friends going into high school. And then meeting a bunch of friends in college my final year that were just like me. Weird as fuck, but lovable as fuck. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, damn, Toriyama did so much. And then to top it all off, if it wasn't for Toriyama picking up that pen, I would never, ever been able to have a reconnection with my father because because of anime and because of a little anime called um clan ed <laughs> oh because that show talks a lot about uh that anime talks a lot about uh family and perspective and it and i literally after finishing that show and i reconnected with my father I literally said, damn, thank God for an anime. Because I had a lot of bent up rage for that motherfucker. And now he's the best fucking dad I could ever ask for. So I guess to give this sad story some closure, I just want to sit here and say, thank you, Toriyama. For waking up one day and deciding to write and draw Dragon Ball. I'm going to miss you, bro. I don't even know you. But thank you for inspiring thousands of us to keep fighting and persevering. Thank you. Because... A lot of us, especially in the hood, especially in the hood, we needed a Goku. 
<laughs> we needed a Vegeta. <laughs> we needed a Gohan. And we needed a Piccolo. Because some of us did not have that growing up. And some of us did not hear. Or did not get this. Did not have a person like Goku to tell you to reach your potential. And keep going. And push through. That's why we have so much people. So much people now going out and training. How I train. Because of Dragon Ball. So. Thank you, Toriyama. You will be well missed. R.I.P. And with that being said, <laughs> I'm going to end this sobby ass shit. Because I'm tired of fucking crying over this shit. I'm going to miss Toriyama. Dragon Ball will always be around. So I don't think no one has to worry if there's going to be more Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is here to stay. You know, it's going to be around. Because Dragon Ball transcended. Toriyama's work has transcended time and space. It will be around forever. Just like spider mans going to be around forever. Dragon Ball is going to be around forever. It has lasting legs because of us. So, again, thank you, Toriyama, for everything. Now, with that being said, this will be my last video for a while until after the trip. So, uh, more videos will come soon. Um, but this is your boy signing out. Have a good one. Later.